Hi, thanks for watching. My name is Jody, and today we're going to talk about how to readjust back to the United States after Peace Corps. Maybe you know somebody who's in the Peace Corps. Maybe you're the mother of somebody who's in the Peace Corps. Maybe your child, your brother, your sister, your aunt, somebody you know, your cousin, your best friend is in the Peace Corps. And you want them to come home and readjust back to life. So I just got home about a month ago, so these ideas are fresh in my mind. And these are things that personally I think could have helped me a ton. And some things that really did help me a ton. And I want to pass this on to you for you and your friend, family member, child, whatever. So that they can readjust back to the United States after Peace Corps smoothly. So I have six pieces of advice for you. The first piece of advice is give them some downtime. Coming back from wherever they're coming from, trust me, they're on high emotion. They just left their life behind them. They just left their job behind them. And it's stressful to travel and to fly that far. Spend at least one day just calming, letting the body readjust. The time change is hard. Everything about it is hard. You don't want them to show up at 8 a.m., get off the plane, and then come home and go straight into a welcome home party, surprise party. That may seem like a great idea, and it is really thoughtful to have like a great surprise party for them. But if you're gonna do any kind of party for them when they get home, maybe let them know so they can prepare. And if they don't sleep well on the plane, it might be kind of hard. And that actually leads me to my second piece of advice is to have a small family get together as soon as your volunteer gets so home. So sweet having my family meet me at the airport and not having to figure out how to get myself home from there. Right after that, we had a welcome home dinner the night I came home. It might seem contradictory that my first piece of advice was downtime and my second piece of advice is to have a family dinner but we the night I came home didn't have a huge party didn't go do anything crazy but we had a family dinner where my grandpa Bill and his partner met us we went out to eat at a restaurant that I chose and we had a great dinner all together and that way I didn't feel like the next day the day afterwards I had to go and visit my immediate family that I really wanted to see but it would have been really exhausting to have to do that the day after I got home. And so it was great that the immediate people that I really knew I needed to see, actually, I saw them right away when I was still on the high from traveling so that I could then go into my downtime the next day to just kind of relax, not do a whole lot, but kind of just decompress after all the traveling and things and I had already seen the most important people to me. It was really perfect. My third piece of advice is to be extra respectful of their the Peace Corps volunteers of their home. So the Peace Corps volunteer was living in a different country for potentially years and they have a special place in their heart for that country, for that place, for their village, for their home. And as hard as it can be to live in a different place across the world, I'm sure they really do have a soft spot for that place. Like I do for Madagascar, I loved it. There were a lot of hard things about it, but I didn't love coming home and people saying, oh, isn't America so much better than Madagascar? Oh, isn't everything here just so much easier, so much better, so much nicer? It kind of does hurt a little bit because I love Madagascar and it wasn't awful living there. It was really hard to be away from family and have a different culture, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to downsize how hard it was, but I do love it there. And so be aware and be cautious that that place is their second home and you know, be respectful, be respectful of how they might view that lovely place that they spent so much time. Some other questions instead of saying, oh, this is so much better than where you were living, or is it life so much easier here? You could ask, like, what do you feel? How does it feel to be home? How does it feel? My family did a great job of asking me, like, how does it feel to be home? How do you feel right now? Does it feel real? Things like that. My fourth piece of advice, I would have never thought of this, but my brother and his fiance, they printed off pictures and put them in my room from my time in Madagascar of some of my students and some of my friends that I had posted on Facebook. And they went ahead and printed those and then put them in my room here where I live so that even when I'm really sad and missing my time in Madagascar, I still have those photos to look at that are just 
around me all the time and it really really is great to have those great idea so print off some pictures from their facebook or have them send you some pictures that they really love and surprise them by having them in their new place where they're going to be staying or helping them uh, put them up in their new apartment my fifth piece of advice might seem obvious and you might have already thought of this but i it was great to come home and have my favorite snacks already there so my family had taken me out at a place that i wanted to eat at and I got to have some of my favorite food the night I came home to the US. And then also I was like eating my favorite snacks all the time. Like everybody wanted me to have my favorite foods. And that was so sweet. It's really nice to have those things that you remember that you really missed, those foods available to you when you get home. So buy your Peace Corps volunteers some snacks and have those ready for when they get there. My final piece of advice is just be there for them. This is obvious and it seems really vague, but if you think about it, your Peace Corps volunteer that's coming home has a lot of things on their plate. They need a place to live. They need a form of transportation. They need a job. They need an income source. They need potentially to go to school. They need some help with grad school applications, with job applications, getting to an interview. They might need clothing to wear because they don't have clothes maybe that fit them anymore from before they went to Peace Corps. They need health insurance. They need to see a dentist. They need car insurance. They need support. They need friends because a lot of their friends probably aren't really around anymore. They need to get a phone. They need to get a phone plan. There's so many things that are very overwhelming and it was kind of scary. That was probably the scariest part for me coming home was being like, I have this whole list of things that I need to take care of as soon as I get home for my life to get rolling again because all at once you just have nothing, no car, no job, no house, no insurance on anything, no idea where anything is, you don't know where you're going to live, you don't know what you're going to do, you don't really have a group of friends necessarily to go to because everybody kind of scatters in two years. And that is the most overwhelming part. So just being there with them. My family did a great job of this again. My brother and his fiance both went with me car shopping, helped me with that. I was calling people for advice on car insurance, on what car to buy. I'm living at my brother's house right now. I didn't have a jacket to wear when I came home because Minnesota was cold and I didn't have any warm jacket. So I borrowed uh, Olivia's jacket. I'm getting help with my health insurance people are giving me advice on like what dentist to go see all of those things are the most helpful things that you could possibly do is be there for them give advice and be available because it's hard to come home and ask people hey can you give me a ride today because i i really need to go to this interview for this job and i don't have a car yet or being like hey can you come with me to look at cars because i don't have any way to get there and those things have been absolutely unbelievably helpful for me. And those are the things that will really help your Peace Corps volunteer when they come home, if you can just be there with those things. The transition to the culture shock, all of those things, they take time and being an open ear to listen can help. But the logistical, straightforward, like laundry list of all those things you need to accomplish, those are the things that will really be appreciated and tactical things that you can really pinpoint and help your Peace Corps volunteer with. And then just be an open ear for them when they have other things they need to talk about. If you want to see the next video that I'm coming out with that will be about what to expect when your loved one joins the Peace Corps, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be notified when I post that video and you can watch it right away. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!